Percy's new friends. It was a busy day on the island of Sodo. All the engines huffed and puffed busily, except Percy. Percy wasn't busy at all. So he puffed perkily to Brendam Docks. Percy wheeshed and whooshed with a whistle and a whoop. He was very happy to see all his friends. Hello, Emily. Would you like to play with me? Hello, Percy. I'm far too busy to play. I have these crates to deliver. Emily rattled away. So, Percy puffed on. He saw Salty. Percy whistled and whooshed loudly. Hello, Salty. Would you like to play with me? Hello, Percy. I'm sorry I have to shunt these cars. Huh. Busy day, busy day. Percy chuffed on. Then he saw his best friend, Thomas. Percy wheeshed and whooshed. He hooted and tooted. Hello, my best friend, Thomas. Can you play with me? I'm sorry, Percy. I have to take these tools to the quarry. I must huff and puff. Percy peeped sadly. All his friends had chuffed away, busy. Then, Percy saw Cranky the Crane. Hello, Cranky. I haven't any friends to play with. Then Percy saw a seagull fly down. It perched on Cranky's crane arm. The seagull squawked. Cranky creaked a smile. Who's that, Cranky? This is my friend, Seagull. Suddenly, Percy peeped and puffed. An idea had popped into his pistons. I can make friends with animals, too. Then I will have lots of friends to play with. Cranky cranked crankily. Do you know how to make friends with animals? Of course I do, Cranky. The same way I always make friends. I wish and I whoosh, I hoot and I toot as loudly as I possibly can. So with a wish and a whoosh, a hoot and a toot, Percy puffed off loudly to make some new friends. Cranky was cross. Not so loud, Percy. You scared Seagull. But Percy didn't hear. He had already huffed happily away. Percy puffed into the woods. He saw a rabbit. With a whoosh and a whoosh and a hoot and a toot, Percy steamed towards the rabbit. Hello, Mr. Rabbit. Will you be my friend? The rabbit hopped and popped into the woods. Percy was puzzled. Perhaps Mr. Rabbit didn't hear me. Next time, I must be even louder. So, Percy puffed on through the woods. Then, Percy saw two squirrels. With a whoosh and a whoosh, a hoot and a toot, Percy raced towards the squirrels. Hello, squirrels. Would you like to be friends with me? The squirrel scurried and hurried up a tree. Percy was puzzled. The squirrels must be very busy. I shall have to find some other friends. And Percy puffed on out of the woods. Then Percy saw a bird. I'm sure Mr. Bird would like to be my friend. So with a wish and a whoosh, a hoot and a toot, Percy rattled and raced towards the bird. Hello, Mr. Bird. I'm Percy. Would you like to be friends with me? Please. But with a squawk and a swoosh, the bird flew off down the track. Come back, Mr. Bird. But the bird didn't come back. He flew off high over the sparkling sea. I can't follow you over the sea, Mr. Bird. Percy was sad. Mr. Bird doesn't want to be my friend. None of the animals want to be my friend. 
Just then, the tracks trembled and the air filled with a mighty roar. Bust my buffers! Out of my way! Express coming through! Percy rattled from funnel to footplate as Gordon thundered past. Percy opened his eyes. Thomas puffed up. Hello, Percy. You look scared. What happened? Gordon scared me. I'm sure Gordon didn't mean to, Percy. I know, Thomas. Gordon is a big engine, and I'm little. Big noisy things can scare little quiet things. This made Percy think. The rabbit and the squirrels and the bird. They are much littler than me, and they are quiet. Then an idea bubbled in Percy's boiler. I must go. Goodbye, Thomas. Percy puffed back the way he came. And there, on the track, he saw Mr. Bird again. But this time, Percy gently applied his brakes. He chuffed as slowly and quietly as he could. Hello, Mr. Bird. I'm very sorry I was so loud earlier. I didn't want to scare you. The bird looked at Percy. Then he flew up onto Percy's buffer. Do you want to go for a ride, little bird? Percy and Mr. Bird puffed gently on. Next, Percy saw the pair of squirrels. He gently applied his brakes and chuffed as slowly and quietly as he could. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Squirrel. I'm very sorry I was so loud earlier. I didn't want to scare you. The squirrels jumped up onto Percy's buffer. All aboard! And Percy, the two squirrels, and Mr. Bird puffed quietly back through the woods. Then Percy saw the rabbit. He chuffed up very quietly. Hello, Mr. Rabbit. I'm very sorry I was so loud earlier. Mr. Rabbit looked at Percy. Then he hopped up onto Percy's buffer next to Mr. and Mrs. Squirrel. Hold tight, everyone! And Percy, Mr. Rabbit, the two squirrels, and Mr. Bird puffed gently along the track. At Tidmouth, all the other engines were back in their sheds. Where is Percy? It's late! Quiet, everyone. Here I am. The other engines were surprised. Percy, who are all these animals? Percy's firebox fizzled with pride. Everyone, meet my new friends. Thomas and the Pigs. There are lots and lots of farms on the island of Sodor. There are farms with sheep. There are farms with cows. There are farms with goats. Thomas likes visiting all the farms. But his favorite farm of all was Farmer Trotter's pig farm. Thomas liked their curly tails and the funny noises they made. Thomas liked to visit Farmer Trotter's pig farm as often as he could. One day, Thomas was watching the pigs roll in the mud. Farmer Trotter was happy to see Thomas. Hello, Farmer Trotter. Hello, Thomas. I have some very special news. One of my pigs is going to have piglets today. Thomas was excited. 
I can't wait to see them. I need some soft straw for the piglets. I'd like you to go to Farmer McCall's right now to collect it. He will be waiting for you. Thomas was happy to help. Yes, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away with his empty flatbed. On his way to Farmer McCall's, Thomas thought about the pigs. I'm sure the piglets will like the soft straw. I wonder if there's anything else they like. Thomas puffed up to the dairy. He saw Percy. Thomas told Percy all about the piglets. How exciting! I wish I could see them, but I have to deliver this milk. Thomas looked at the milk churns. An idea flew into his funnel. I'm sure the piglets would like some milk. May I have some? Of course you can, Thomas. So the milk churns were loaded onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you, Percy. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And he steamed away. Thomas felt pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then Thomas saw James. James was at an orchard. The trees were full of juicy red apples. Hello, James. Hello, Thomas. Thomas told James all about the piglets. The piglets will soon be born. I must collect some soft straw for them. I wish I could see the piglets, but I have to deliver these boxes of apples to the village. Thomas looked at the juicy red apples. I'm sure the piglets would like some juicy red apples. May I have some? Of course you can. So Thomas's flatbed was loaded with lots and lots of juicy red apples. Thank you, James. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. Thomas chuffed quickly away. He felt very pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then Thomas saw some children. They were collecting shiny brown Hello, chestnuts. Thomas. Hello. Thomas told the children all about the piglets. They were very excited. <laughs> I'm sure the piglets would like some shiny brown chestnuts to eat. Please, may I have some for them? The children were delighted to give Thomas some of their shiny brown chestnuts. Thank you. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And Thomas puffed away. He felt even more pleased. At last, Thomas chuffed to Farmer McCall's farm. Farmer McCall was waiting. He was cross. Thomas, you're late. Where have you been? I'm sorry, Farmer McCall. I stopped to collect some milk, some juicy red apples, and some shiny brown chestnuts for the piglets. Farmer McCall looked at Thomas's flatbed. He saw the milk, the juicy red apples, and shiny brown chestnuts. Your flatbed is full. You have no room for straw now. Fizzling fireboxes. I didn't think about that. I hope the piglets will like the milk, the apples, and the chestnuts just as much as straw. I must puff straight back to Farmer Trotter's. The piglets will be born soon. So Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the farm. Farmer Trotter was waiting. He looked at Thomas's full flatbed. He was surprised. Thomas, where's the soft straw? I thought the piglets would like these things just as much as straw. No, Thomas. Piglets need soft straw, and they're about to be born. Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I'll empty my flatbed, then I'll puff back to Farmer McCall's as fast as I can. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. The piglets will need it by the end of the day. Thomas saw Percy at the water tower. Thomas, I know something else the piglets would like. 
I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop. Bye, Thomas. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Next, Thomas saw James at a junction. Hello, Thomas. I've been thinking about the piglets. I'm sure they'd like... I'm sorry, James. I can't stop. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Thomas whooshed and he whooshed. He huffed and he puffed until he arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. It was late. Hello, Farmer McCall. Now I have plenty of room for the soft straw for the piglets. Could you load it right now? Of course I can, Thomas. Thank you, Farmer McCall. I must hurry. Thomas's pistons pumped and his axles ached. I must puff fast. There's no time for delay. The piglets need straw by the end of the day. At last, Thomas arrived at Farmer Trotter's pig farm. It was now nearly nighttime. Thomas saw that the pigs had gone. <gasps> Cinders and ashes. I'm too late. You're just in time, Thomas. I need that soft straw right away. Farmer Trotter unloaded the straw from Thomas's flatbed. And he took it away to make a nice soft bed for the piglets. The piglets have just been born. Thomas was delighted. Bubbling boilers! Look how small they are and how sweet. Thomas could see the piglets really like the soft straw. Aw, that little piglet is looking at me. I think I'll call him Thomas. Thomas was so happy. His axles tingled and his boiler bubbled. Percy's Good Deeds there are lots of beautiful birds on the island of Sodor. The engines know their names and their songs. One day, the engines were especially excited. A new bird had been seen on the island. Sir Toppin had arrived at Timbib Sheds. He had important news. The Sodor Warbler has arrived back on the island. Very few people have ever seen this bird. So, a lot of visitors will be coming to our island. You will all be very busy taking them to spot the bird. Remember your passenger coaches at all times. And remember not to frighten the wobbler. Percy was worried for the wobbler. Do you think the Sodor wobbler will be scared of engines? No, Percy. Not if you're real useful. And I need you to be real useful. Yes, sir. You must deliver the nesting pole to Bob's Cove. Percy was puzzled. Um, what's the nesting pole? It's a tall pole with a shelf on top. Birds built their nests on it. Percy liked this idea. Do you understand, Percy? Yes, sir. I will deliver the pole straight away. Good. We hope the Sodor Wobber will make its home here once more. That's a very exciting special, Percy. Percy was happy. He puffed away proudly. Later, Percy clickety clack. Ahead, he could see Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas had stopped. That's strange. Percy chuffed slowly up to Thomas. Is anything wrong, Thomas? No, Percy. I'm waiting for my McCall cross with a sheep. Percy could see the sheep tripping and tapping across the tracks. Thomas, you've helped me. That's a good deed. Well done. You're welcome, Farmer McCoe. Thomas chuffed away cheerfully. Percy puffed and puzzled. I would like to help someone. They will call it a good deed, and they will say, Well done, Percy. This made Percy feel very happy. 
I'm sure I can deliver the nesting pole and do good deeds. So Percy hopped happily on. Soon, Percy saw Farmer Trader's pink pigs. They were snuffling and sniffing sadly at the side of the track. Hmm, those pigs don't look very happy. Then, Percy saw that the pigs were looking at the muddy field on the other side of the tracks. I know what's wrong. Those pigs want to row in the muddy field. If I stop here, those pigs can cross safely. They won't be scared anymore. So Percy stopped, and the pigs tripped and trotted across the tracks. Soon, the pigs weren't pink anymore. They were brown, muddy, and very happy. Farmer Trotter wasn't happy at all. I wanted pink pigs to take to the county fair. Percy was sorry. Oh dear, Farmer Trotter is cross. I didn't help at all. Suddenly, an idea flew into Percy's funnel. I'll reverse back down the track. Then the pigs will have more room to cross. Percy pumped his pistons. His wheels whirred. He puffed steam and he chuffed backwards. This should help Farmer Trotter, but it didn't help. The pigs were scared by Percy's steam and the whir of his wheels. They scatter and clutter into the apple crates. The apples rolled everywhere. This made the pigs very happy. They munched and scrunched the rosy red apples, but now they wouldn't move from the tracks. That made Farmer Trotter even more cross. Bustle, buffers! My idea wasn't a good deed at all. Just then, Thomas hopped up on the down line. Annie and Carlo were fellow visitors to see the Sodor Wobbler. Cinders and ashes! How am I going to pop through? The Sodor Wobbler has been spotted in the Fenwyn fields. I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry, Thomas. I was trying to help Farmer Trotter. I'm sure I can help you. I'll take your visitors to the Fiddlewin Fields. We'll be there in good time. Thomas thought this was a good idea. Thank you, Percy. The visitors were surprised. They stepped and scurried through the pigs to Percy's passenger coach. Percy felt pleased. I'm sure this is a good deed, and I'm sure I still have time to deliver the nesting pole. Percy puffed and huffed his hardest. All the way to the fiddling fields. Here we are. Watch out for the wobbler. The visitors were very excited. They opened the coach doors carefully. They didn't want to scare the soda or wobbler away. Percy felt very happy. At last, I've been helpful. I've done the good deed. Percy tooted a loud goodbye. Then there was trouble. A colorful bird flapped and flew from a tree high into the sky and away. It was a Sodor Wobbler. The visitors moaned and groaned. Fizzling fireboxes! The bird was scared of my loud whistle. Percy steamed sadly away. I wanted to help the pigs. I wanted to help Farmer Trotter. I wanted to help the visitors, but I haven't helped anybody. I've done no good deeds, and I haven't delivered a nesting pole. Percy felt terrible. Percy huffed towards Bluff's Cove. He had to deliver the nesting pole. I don't think anyone is ever going to say, "Well done, Percy," to me. Percy waited at the junction. His wheels wobbled with worry. Now I'm sure I'll be late with the nesting pole, so Top and Hat will be cross with me. Oh dear, oh dear! Suddenly, a colorful bird flew from a tree. Percy was too sad to smile at the bird. The bird landed on Percy's buffer. At least I can give that bird a rest and a ride. So Percy. And the beautiful bird chuffed on towards Bluff's Cove. 
Percy puffed to the halt. A lot of visitors were waiting. They were hoping to see the Sodor Warbler. I hope they'll be pleased that I have delivered the nesting pole. But the visitors weren't just pleased; they were amazed. They smiled and pointed, and took out their cameras. Percy was surprised. Oh, the visitors seemed very pleased to see me. I can't think why. After all, no one has said, "Well done, Percy." Well done, Percy. You have brought the Sodor Wobbler to us. Hooray for Percy! Percy blinked and blushed. The bird that I carried on my buffer was the Sodor Wobbler. Then Thomas arrived with more visitors. Well done, Percy. Percy was so proud that his firebox fizzed and his blur bubbled. And this time, I wasn't even trying to do a good deed. Soon the nesting pole was up. The Sodor Wobbler looked snug and sleepy in its nest at the top. I think our friend likes his new home. Welcome home, Mr. Wobbler. And well done, Percy. Thomas's tall friend. The island of Sodor has many wonderful places to visit. Today was a special day. A new animal park was to be opened on Sodor. There were wide open spaces for the animals to live in. All the engines were very excited. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. He beamed from buffer to buffer. Good morning, Percy. Good morning, Thomas. Look at my special leaves to feed the animals. I have rosy red apples for the animals. And I am to take the mayor and Sir Topham Hatt to open the park. Do you have a special, Thomas? I am to take the tallest animal on Sodor up to the animal park. Percy and Edward gasped. What is it, Thomas? It's a giraffe. All the engines wished with wonder. They had never seen a giraffe before. Bizzling fireboxes, Mr. Giraffe. You are very tall. Edward, Gordon, and Percy were puzzled. Will he blow over? Why is he so spotty? Does he sit down? Of course he'll sit down. You must wait for the giraffe keeper. The giraffe will do what his keeper tells him. But Thomas didn't want to wait for the giraffe keeper. He wanted to show the children the tallest animal on Sodor. Don't worry, Cranky. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. And Thomas puffed proudly out of the docks. Thomas and the giraffe huffed happily along. Children waved and whooped, and Thomas's firebox fizzed with excitement. Thomas slowed as he puffed to a low bridge. Sit down, Mr. Giraffe. The giraffe didn't want to sit down. He wanted to see the sights of Sodor. Thomas wished. Then he heard a familiar whistle. It was Gordon. He was taking the mayor and Sir Topham Hatt to the animal park. Out of the way! Express coming through. I can't go under the bridge with Mr. Giraffe. This made Gordon grumpy. You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No, thank you, Gordon. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him.
So Gordon huffed huffily away. But Thomas didn't know how to make the giraffe sit down. Thomas saw some cows. They munched merrily, then lay lazily in the sun. Edward chuffed up. An idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Edward, can Mr. Giraffe eat some of your apples? Why, Thomas? Because then he will feel sleepy and lie down. Edward was puzzled, but he wanted to help his friend Thomas. Thank you, Edward. The giraffe liked Edward's rosy red apples. He liked them so much he ate and ate and ate, and he didn't sit down. Edward was upset. Bubbling boilers! You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No, thank you, Edward. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. But Thomas was worried. Sir Topham Hatt and the mayor would be waiting at the animal park. Then, Percy puffed past. Hello, Thomas. What's the matter? Mr. Giraffe won't sit down. Can he eat some of your leaves? Then he's sure to want to lie down and sleep. Percy was happy to help his best friend Thomas. The giraffe liked Percy's leaves. He thought they were a wonderful game. Leaves flittered and floated through the air until there were none left at all. Cinders and ashes. I only wanted you to sit down, Mr. Giraffe. Suddenly, the giraffe did sit down, and he closed his eyes. Mr. Giraffe's asleep, Percy. We must steam straight to the animal park. So Thomas and Percy clickety clack along the track and under the bridge to the animal park. Then there was trouble. The mayor and Sir Topham Hatt were cross. They had waited a long time for the tallest animal on Sodor, but the tallest animal on Sodor was fast asleep. Wake up, Mr. Giraffe! Please. But the giraffe slept on. This is a disaster, Thomas. Thomas felt terrible. There were no rosy red apples, no juicy leaves, and no wide awake Mr. Giraffe. I know, sir. It is a disaster. I should have waited for the giraffe keeper. I was silly to think Mr. Giraffe would do what I told him. I'll puff my hardest to the docks and bring the keeper here. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. The giraffe keeper was at the docks. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, sir. All aboard! The giraffe was still asleep when Thomas puffed into the animal park. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will wake up now. You're here, sir. And then Thomas chuffed away. He had a lot to do. At Farmer McCall's farm, Thomas picked up more rosy red apples, and from the orchard, more juicy leaves. At last, Thomas puffed and chuffed and huffed back to the animal park. Everyone was cheering and clapping Sodor's tallest animal. Mr. Giraffe, you're awake. The giraffe heard Thomas's toot. He stretched his long neck up, 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 and then down to Thomas's face. 
Welcome to Sodor, Mr. Giraffe. Fuzzy Bees. It was a fine summer morning on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining, the birds sang. The flowers bloomed, and Thomas clickety clacked along the track to Brendam Docks. Thomas's good friend Hero was unloading at Brendam Docks. Good morning, Hero. Sir Topham Hatt tells me I have a special special today for Farmer Trotter. Good morning, my friend. Yes, you do. Look. Thomas gasped. Flatten my funnel. They look like small white wooden houses. Who lives in them? Bees, my good friend. Lots and lots of bees. Their houses are called hives. Inside the hives. The bees are very busy making honey. This made Thomas excited. Sir Topham Hatt always has honey on his crumpets. I'll puff as fast as I can to deliver the beehives to Farmer Trotter. Suddenly, Hero was stern. Thomas, chuff slowly and smoothly. Take the truck through the woods. Then the bees will rest. You have to look after bees very carefully. Don't worry, Hero. I will. They'll be happy with me. Hero smiled. Very well. I have to deliver these crates. Then I must pick up some flowers from Farmer Mako. I will visit the bees when I've finished. Hero steamed slowly away. Thomas was coupled up to the beehives. <whistles> Off we go, bees. Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. Ahead, he saw the track through the woods. The other track ran past a field full of flowers and bright sunshine. The field with flowers is much prettier than the woods. I'm sure the bees would like that better. So, Thomas didn't take the track through the wood as Hero had told him to. Thomas huffed happily along. Buzzy bees are busy bees, and busy bees make honey. Buzzy bees are happy bees when it's warm and sunny. Suddenly, there was a buzzing and a bizzing. Thomas applied his brakes. Bust my buffers! What's that? Thomas looked over to the field. His bees were everywhere. They buzzed busily. Flying from flower to flower, Thomas was surprised. Oh no! Come back, bees! Come back to your hives! The bees weren't listening to Thomas. They were too busy buzzing in the field. Thomas tried again. Please come back, bees! We'll be late for Farmer Trotter. But still, the bees weren't listening to Thomas. Fizzling fireboxes! I can't take the beehives to Farmer Trotter empty. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. The bees like flowers. I will chuff my hardest to Farmer McCall's and pick up the flat bed of flowers. Then the bees will buzz around my flowers and back to their hives. So Thomas was uncoupled from his flat bed. Then he steamed swiftly away. Thomas arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. He saw the flatbed of flowers. I'm sure Hero won't mind if I borrow his flowers. I'll bring them back as soon as the bees are in their hives again. And Thomas huffed happily back to the field. The bees were still buzzing busily from flower to flower in the field. Then. They saw Thomas's flowery flatbed. The buzzy bees left the field and buzzed all around Thomas. They flew into his funnel. They buzzed his boiler and whizzed his wheels. Trembling tracks! This flatbed of flowers wasn't a good idea. 
Go away, bees, please. Buzz into your hives and make honey. But the bees weren't listening to Thomas. They were too busy buzzing. I must race like the wind. Then maybe the bees will be blown off my buffers and fly back to their hives. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. But the bees didn't mind the wind on their wings. They flew round Thomas like a buzzing cloud. Thomas chuffed and puffed to a siding. Very well, bees. If you won't leave me, I will leave you. Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed of flowers, and he clickety clacked away down the track. Now the buzzy bees won't bother me. They're too busy making honey for Sir Topham Hatt's tea. Thomas chuffed to a junction. Hero was there. Thomas was surprised to see his friend. Hello, Hero. You look puzzled. I am Thomas. Farmer McCall's flowers have disappeared, and you have still not delivered the bees to Farmer Trotter. He's waiting and worried. Thomas looked at his wise friend Hero. He hadn't looked after the bees. He hadn't looked after their hives, and he hadn't taken the woodland track. But he had taken Hero's flowers. Hero, I have been very silly. I have been everything you told me not to be. But now I will do everything you told me to do. Please wait for me here. I will bring you back your flowers. Thomas's wheels started to whir, and his boiler started to bubble. Thomas had a lot to do. Thomas puffed back to the flatbed of flowers. The bees were still buzzing, but Thomas didn't mind. Follow me, bees. I'll take you back to your hives. And Thomas weeshed away to the flatbed of beehives. Farmer Trotter is waiting for you, bees. You will like living on his farm. Then Thomas chuffed carefully away and took the track through the woods. The woods were deep and dark. The bees felt cold. It's time to go home, all you busy bees. It's time to make honey in the shade of the trees. And the busy bees buzzed into their hives. Farmer Trotter was waiting for Thomas. He was very pleased to see his new beehives. Thank you, Thomas. But. Why have you brought me all those flowers? They're not for you, Farmer Trotter. Hero is waiting for these. I must hurry. Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed down the track. Hero was waiting for Thomas. So, my good friend, here are my flowers. I'm sorry, Hero. You will be late. I know. But from these flowers, Farmer Trotter will have the best honey on Sodor. The two friends smiled. It had been a very busy, buzzy day.